and welcome to Empowering Homeschool Conversations. My name is Peggy Ployer, and I'm the host of this weekly broadcast put on by SPED Homeschool, as well as its founder and CEO. We at SPED Homeschool empower families to home educate children with learning challenges, and I encourage you to check out our website at spedhomeschool.com to learn more about the resources and support we offer families. And some of the best resources that we have on our website are our partner organizations, and I'm excited to have one of our partners here with us tonight, Dr. Rebecca Spencer with Cherish Children Ministries. Welcome, Rebecca. Thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah. So Rebecca's been on the show before, and the conversations we've had in the past have been extremely popular. Um, I know I've looked back at some of the previous episodes, and they've had a lot of views. So Rebecca has just a lot, a wealth of information, and she's even going back to school now to get even more. (laughs) So she... um, (laughs) taking time out of her her busy schedule to share with us and um so thank you for just your willingness to share you know the struggles because that's kind of what we're going to talk about is finding your inner teacher when just traditional methods don't work and teaching your kids and i know you were at that place with your own kids so i'm gonna um have you as we get started talk about that um, and this is wrapping up a month of us sharing community stories um, we've always called july um, sped homeschool awareness month um, so i just want to thank you for um, joining in with us for that and if you're watching i see we have viewers popping on already um, just know that you can make comments in the feed whether you're watching on youtube or facebook um, and we would love to make you part of our conversation and um and just share in in this this um, a, a very popular topic of okay, <laughs> it's not, nothing's working yet, and I'm I'm frustrated. And so, so Rebecca, I know you've been in that place. Can you share a little bit of your story with um, our viewers as we get started? Yes, absolutely. So, um, I'm a mom of three boys, and. Um, I always tell people I I don't really wear the name Dr. Will. I'm more like Dr. Mom, but (laughs) I, (laughs) I I do have that. So I use that as part of the testimony because Mm. I did write my dissertation or my doctorate degree. um, And mine was specifically um, for reading and student achievement. And Mm. so when I got to my middle son, my oldest son, he just took off reading um, Hmm. like about, about 40% of our, our kiddos will do that, but the rest of them, they need some explicit and systematic kinds of instruction, which is what I'm Mm. actually doing right now as I'm getting that certified academic language therapy licensing. So, um, and that's with down in Texas, Peggy, with the Mm -hmm. Scottish Rite Hospital, Children's Hospital. Mm. And so, um, it's really, it does include multi-sensory. And so with, with my middle son, I was in tears every day. He was in tears every day. Mm. It was a really um, sad state of affairs in the Spencer (laughs) home. Um, It was. And I say that because I know there are moms and teachers alike that Mm -hmm. are in or have been or will be in my shoes. And if I can give anything to help them That's what I want to do. So Hmm. that was when my child was a young learner. He is now entering seventh grade middle school. (laughs) He is thriving. He has the tools he needs in his tool belt Mm -hmm. for to problem solve. He has those tools to um, help him specifically with dyslexia because he's actually dyslexic. But I also have an auditory processing delay learner. He's actually hearing impaired. That's our baby. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it has been a struggle here for me. Um, But I had to learn to incorporate um, different modalities into mm-hmm. everyday instruction and utilize those for optimal learning hmm. opportunities. Yeah. So I'm excited to share some of those things with your listeners. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. Cause I think we, we think as parents, oh, I've just never been trained. So therefore I'm failing my child mm-hmm. and to hear from somebody who was trained and they still are frustrated. It, it is. And I know I've interviewed multiple people, you know, on the whole process of reading and writing and how complex that process is. And, and like you said, there are some kids that just get it 
And, and I think if we all had one, you know, every one of those, or you started out with one of those, you're like, oh, I'm the best homeschool teacher ever. <laughs> and then you get those, the next one and you go, oh, <laughs> what did I do wrong? And it's not us really. It's just our kids need something different. So yeah, thank you for pointing that out. That's, it's just so important. Um, so, so Rebecca's going to talk with us about some just alternative different approaches and can you when we just to get started i know the the common approach often if something isn't working is we go out and we buy a new curriculum because we think okay so it's the curriculum that's failing um and where are the errors in the thinking in in that and is there is there some good in that? Should we be looking for a new curriculum or should we be looking for something different? That's a really great question, Peggy. <laughs> I get asked that all the time at different um, conferences that I attend. Hmm. So I always say I am not a promoter of any one curriculum. My job is just to equip parents with what they need to understand to help them mm. reach the learning goals of their learners. And so to answer your question, I do not believe <laughs> that throwing a curriculum is really expensive. Mm -hmm. And I was actually one of those people. I did invest a lot of money at one curriculum after another, mm. only to end up in the same failing position I was the year before. So oh, yeah. that was not the answer for me. Mm -hmm. um, it was really checking to see pretty much any curriculum. And of course, there are some better than others. Mm -hmm. But any curriculum is going, you're going to cover concepts. You're going, you have a certain scope and sequence you're going to mm -hmm. cover. It's, a, it's about the approach. It's about figuring mm -hmm. out how your child is bent, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what do you see your child doing? on mm -hmm. his or her own, without any mm -hmm. parental intervention, mm -hmm. without you telling them to do anything, they are just doing it, minus right. video games, right? Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, just, just what are they doing? What do you find them doing? For example, mm -hmm. my severely dyslexic, what do I find him doing? Well, he has a little woodworking area. Um, hmm. He loves to work with his hands. I don't have to tell him to do this. If hmm. I want to know where that child is, I'm going to go find him and he's going to be building a birdhouse or he's going to be making homemade coasters or something hmm. like that for a gift for family. Because I also know hmm. that his love language is gift giving. Oh, so we yeah. also, incorporate, you know, you have to think about your child's love language, right? Mm, so are mm -hmm. they, do they need, are they words of encouragement? Are they a physical touch? What right. kind of love language do they carry? Mm -hmm. And um, that took a lot of prayer and discernment on my husband and my part as we mm. work to try to know each of our children as an individual, because that middle son, I'm the oldest in my family. My husband mm. is also the oldest in his family. And we only have, each of us only have a younger sibling. And oh. so we don't even know how to deal with this middle kid. Right. So that's what God does. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so yeah. to answer that question, I do not believe that you need to throw money at curriculum. Of mm. course, if you've prayed about this and you've tried things and you feel very strongly about, mm -hmm. no, this is good. This, let's just say this, the curriculum isn't going to be the game changer. The game right. changer is going mm -hmm. to be the modalities. It's going to be the approach. It's going to be the multi-sensory. It's going mm -hmm. to be how you can get that child to fall in love with um, whatever it is you're learning. Now, here's the thing. Right. They're not going to love everything that they that you need to <laughs> Right. So that, that's so you're true. Not going to, yes. love to diagram sentences. I'm sorry. Who loves mm. that except for maybe me? Right. <laughs> so they don't love that. But there is a rationale for those things. Right. And so when I talk to parents and they ask me these questions, well, oh, they're just not into it. They just don't like it. Okay. Well, there's a, you know, you have to weigh mm -hmm. 
this in a little bit. You have to say, okay, well, is this a goal that we need to meet? You know, do Mm -hmm. you find, Mm -hmm. it depends. Like um, for us, we actually do follow a scope and sequence and, but I can tweak those things, right? Right. Some Mm -hmm. are a little bit more lax and they're just kind of more like, oh, if we hit it, we hit it. We don't. And that's fine. It's up Mm -hmm. to each. That's why we're here, right? Is to help families work with us for their family. Mm -hmm. But you might have a learner in your family that doesn't mesh well with your personality. I have one of those. Um, Yes. You might have a learner. If you're free spirited and you're like, let's just go with the flow. You actually Mm -hmm. might have a learner in your home. that's like, no, I need to have a schedule. I need to know what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, why I'm doing it and how you want me to do this. Right. So sometimes Mm -hmm. when we have multiple kids that are not like us, yeah. We're, we we find ourselves in a pickle, kind of. So yes, yeah. And if you, you are one of those people, listen to our broadcast last week, because that's what we focused on for a whole hour. And Kathleen was so good in talking about that and how her kids were so different than her. Um, but yes, thank you for pointing that out because we can think this is the way school should be, you know, and this works for me, but it doesn't work for our kids. Right. We all have those different ideas of what it should Mm -hmm. look like. And not that one is any better, right, wrong, or otherwise. Right. Yeah, exactly. So that's why it's important for us to figure out how these kids learn, Mm -hmm. how we can reach them. Yeah, yeah. So so you talked about, like, modalities. So to our our viewers, what what is that? Yeah, so that's a really great question. So so I I want to just preface this with... um, how many of us grew up in a church or um, where we had to sit still, maybe take notes, don't talk unless you're spoken to, right? Mm-hmm. Um, memorize these Bible verses. Now, those are that's that's more of a traditional kind of a learner. So, mm-hmm. if you're that kind of a learner and that works for you, that's wonderful. But we do know that, like Peggy says, these modalities. We might have kids that are more on that naturalistic kind of side and. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like Gary Thomas, how he describes those different pathways um, of connecting with God. But but Hmm. what I want to say is the modalities can be um, I call it VACT. So so V-A-K-T. All right. So you Hmm. have B for visual. Right. So visual. Okay, and I, I described this to my students. Think about this like um, maybe a baseball diamond. Okay, hmm. so we want to get to home plate. Okay. So when we get first base, would be the way we intake information is with our eyes, with visual. Hmm. Mm-hmm. We go to second base and we intake it with our ears. So now we have visual and then auditory, right? Mm -hmm. And then third base is going to be kinesthetic. So that's going to be things that we can touch. Okay. Mm -hmm. Things that we like move around. I shouldn't say touch. That's a different one. It's Mm -hmm. whenever we move, we get up, we move around the body. Mm -hmm. Um, we sky write our handwriting or whatever. Mm, you just mm-hmm. you move. You get moving, okay, for right. kinesthetic. And then the home, what brings us home is our tactile. So that's mm. the T in VACT, okay? So visual, okay. And auditory, kinesthetic, and um, tactile is going to bring us to home plate for that home run. Mm. So we want to include all of those in our lessons. Now, that's Mm. the thing with curriculum is it might not tell you that, but just know that as a parent, know that as a teacher, VAC, and it does not, Mm. something I want you to know and to encourage you, you do not have to make a disaster out of your home for this to happen. (laughs) That is so good to know. (laughs) (laughs) I used to think, um, and I came from, I had a classroom of third graders. I had 28 with no aid. And when I was in public school, um, I do Christian ed now, but and it's a lot different, but, um, but I'm like, how am I going to get these kids to, I would break out the shaving cream. I would spend an hour cleaning up wow. after we had our activity, mm-hmm. right? right? But we don't have to do that. There are so many ways that you can stimulate those senses without making a disaster out of your home. It doesn't have to be rocket science. Okay. Uh-huh. All you have to do, how many of us have seen those cross stitch little, um, they're like, like an eight and a half by 11. Mm -hmm. plastic cross stitch. Why don't you just put one of those down, grab a crayon. I have my kids do this. Let's Mm. say for, I have a kid that hates handwriting, hates Mm. it. Okay. 
that's just not how he's naturally been, but we still have to get through this, right? Right. So it's fun and I don't want to make a mess of my house. Mm-hmm. So just um, on, I put his paper on top of that plastic um, cross stitch um, little template mm-hmm. and I put the handwriting paper over it and I get a crayon for him mm-hmm. and he actually writes on that. What that does is that mm. is that's stimulating those senses and so he sees the crown's kind of bumpy right but Mm -hmm. he's getting the feel he's still doing it and he's like this is kind of fun right Uh you could do that um something else that we do is this is um a lot of kids need um like for example if i have these are my little word my oh yeah these are um Uh i have tons of these so i only put out three but we call these like this one right here this is a magnet that i have put on the Mm, back mm -hmm. of these lips because with my auditory learner he needs to know what my lips look like he needs to know what Mm. the t and the d say and so i show him this right here is my tongue tapper i can show you where to there we go there you go tongue tapper and it's a tongue tapper because it says t, t, t. Mm-hmm. the letter D is also a tongue tapper and it says d, d, d. Ah. So I'm going to put that on this. This is just a cookie sheet. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. They're cheap. They're like a dollar in Walmart. Right. So put the tongue tapper here. This is my smiling vowel. My smiling vowel says I. My smiling vowel says several things, but mm-hmm. for today where I'm going to show your listeners how it says I. Mm-hmm. So this says I. And then my lip puffer, my lip puffer says p, p, p. And hmm. my lip puffer also says b, b, b in its oh, voice. Okay. So it's a lip puffer, right? It's a lip mm-hmm. puffer, p, 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 unvoiced. It's mm. a lip puffer, b, 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 voiced. So mm. see how we are, we see it, we feel it, mm-hmm. and we hear it. Hear it, right. Okay? Mm-hmm. And so if I have the word, let's say I have the word, here's it. I'll just put this on my cookie sheet. I, It, pit. Hmm. If this is pit, show me dip. D, I, p. Oh, just switch them. D, I, p. Switcheroo. Hmm. So we can make it fun for them in that way. That's just something right. if you're looking at something for your language lessons. You can mm-hmm. do that with bigger words, shorter words, whatever. I just want to do something easy for right. you. Right. Yeah. So you well, and especially that. when those, the, the, the letters themselves, you know, they they seem so abstract to some students yes. and to have that visual of this is yes. the way my mouth looks instead right. yes. um, as kind of a gateway into mm-hmm. that we have to put these things together in order to make a word. Um, yes. I, I see that as extremely beneficial to a lot yes. of students who, you know, you just you can't like start with those basic curriculums because they really aren't ready. They don't have everything they need to, to start with just where, where a lot of them start. So, right. uh, Right. Um, so we do, so that's one way to do Mm -hmm. a lesson is, um, get you some lips. What, what are the lips doing? Um, I teach a lot with phonemic awareness and phonology and, um, I do a lot of tutoring with students. Um, and this has, um, I always make sure my students are saying their sounds right, you know, especially if you have, um, Mm. we, I mean, that's another, that's another lesson for another day, but I just want to make sure that we are, that they are saying those sounds correctly Mm -hmm. because there is, there is a correct way to say them and it really can confuse our, our students if, um, our kiddos, if they add some sounds that aren't there, which Mm -hmm. was me, that was me. So Ah. I'm just telling you as a a mom. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, um, yeah. So anyway, that's that's that part. Also, mm-hmm. um, your kids might be naturalists. Um, they might be sensates. So maybe they love music. Maybe they love music, mm-hmm. right? Maybe they mm-hmm. want to sing and dance. 
we can incorporate that, right? Oh, yeah. What uh-huh. if they like um, just being outside, hmm. uh, being outside? So I tell, I always try to connect this with God, right? So mm-hmm. that's how they're, why are we teaching our kids anyway? Because they are given to us by the Lord mm-hmm. and we are supposed to help them be all that he's created them to be. So I always yes. go back to Jeremiah 29, 11, right? Mm. Or I know the plans I have for you, right? Plans yeah. for good, not for evil, plans for hope and for a future. And so we don't mm-hmm. know what these little guys that we were training, we don't know what difference they're going to make in the world. It could be something, exactly. I mean, they're, they're going to, the world is better because of them. Mm. And so we just want to try to channel those energies, to channel those learning styles, to channel those modalities into right. using those gifts and talents that God gave them because they do have those gifts and talents. Mm-hmm. So um, what if your child loves outdoors? We'll have... Um, go visit a zoo together, right? Mm -hmm. Go talk about zoo things. What if they love art? Well, why don't you have family like art worship time, reflect Mm. God's make painting or pottery or, you know, something that may be out of our comfort zone as parents, but um, it can still help them. What about Mm -hmm. those traditional kids that just, they they love God through tradition and long established patterns of worship. I have one of those Mm -hmm. learners, very traditional. He, he likes routine. He's like, I like that King James Bible. (laughs) Oh. <laughs> year old, which is fine. I'm glad he does. I'm not right. arguing with him, but that's not what I want. Mm-hmm. So we just, you know, it's, he's very traditional. He's very, I pray for his children. One of these <laughs> <laughs> Never too early to start. <laughs> no, no. But our kids' mm-hmm. faith can learn. I mean, our kids' faith can grow through these experiences that we're able to mm-hmm. provide them. But what about the activist kid, the one that gets frustrated with injustice, especially when others are hurt? They want to see, they want, you know, they, they're they doers. They're not just hearers. They're the ones that are like, let's do something about it. Look at this trash along the side of the road. Let's, mm-hmm. Okay, well, let's just pick up the trash along the side of the road then. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can serve at a food pantry together or a soup kitchen or something as a family. Right. Then you've got your enthusiast kids and they love God in the midst of joy and celebrations. They're your, mm. I have one of these too. It's, it's <laughs> definitely the party in the house. Right. Um, you know, they like hands-on, that physical, that kinesthetic, like I talked about that modality. Mm-hmm. Um, and they can serve the Lord in those ways. They may be a great praise and worship leader someday. We just never right. know what, yeah. what we can be um, accessing through those modalities. And then we have those mm-hmm. caregiving kids and yeah. they just, um, that probably goes hand in hand with their love language of, um, with that, with that love language. Right. Um, and so you can, you know, go visit nursing homes and make mm-hmm. gifts for hurting mm-hmm. people, things like that. And then of course you have your intellectuals and they love books and mm-hmm. books, and books, and probably <laughs> the one, you know, the ones that need all those extra sensory things that we're talking about may not be those that are just love, love learning. Right. So mm-hmm. we have to actually try to figure out how to engage that. So yes. if you want it, um, Pull up, Peggy, some of those examples. Yeah. I honestly don't have a rhyme or reason to the order, but maybe we can okay. just go through them. Just sure. Um, so you had something about equine yeah. hypotherapy. So this is something, hypotherapy, um, we live on a ranch, and so we have horses. And this one is actually an amazing therapy horse. Um, he is, uh, he he's like a big dog. Wow. Um, yeah. I used to have a cow like that. <laughs> here, this little girl that you see on the picture, mm-hmm. this was a huge, uh, these kids come to us and to my, um, I do a lot of tutoring and they'll come to me. They're sad. Their parents, mm. um, they're ho- a lot of them are homeschool families. They're like, I've tried everything. Um, wow. and so we'll do some tutoring together and I'll get them out there on the horse. And it's amazing how their confidence, mm. um, just boosts. These kids just need a confidence boost. They already feel like they're not smart. They're not right. like their brother or their sister or mm. boy, whoever mm-hmm. it may be. They learn differently. Right. So I got this little girl on the horse and this has been a process. This has not just happened in a day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But we really worked on her different, you know, I, I talk a lot about the different um, senses. And so we worked a lot with proprioception and vestibular on her and her balance. Mm. And she finally got to this point. But what I did, Peggy, was I actually used um, 
phonics cards. So you can name it whatever you want. Hmm. Whatever curriculum you have, I don't care what curriculum it is, I'm sure they have something in there. There's got mm. to be something that is book related. This one is really struggling with just any kinds of letters, sounds, um, mm. diagraphs, diphthongs, um, all kinds of things. So we are working on those and how we do it is she's on the horse when we fi finally got to this point. She, she would sit first, but we finally got to mm -hmm. this point. And I am, what, she, what she'll do is I'm holding this big chart in front of her and she's hmm. reading to me. So it's big. Wow. She's working those proprioceptive, mm -hmm. you know, and, the, and she's keeping her balance. She's working on the core yeah. and she, her confidence is built. And her mom was literally in tears Aww. whenever we showed her what she had accomplished for the day hmm. and, and I always tell parents and I go over what we've done for the day yeah. and she was able to actually see that wow she is making hmm. tremendous progress so that's amazing she loves, she loves animals so she would be my naturalist kind of a kid mm -hmm. um, that needs something outside she doesn't want to sit at a desk Right. Not granted, sometimes she has to, I'm sure, yeah. but she wants to be outside. So if we can get this kiddo mm. outside and we can get her in with animals and then we have hippotherapy, which is doing just that, right. um, then it is very helpful. So that's one example Yeah. Of what, what you can do. That's awesome. Yes. Um, this is another, this is like an example of some handwriting paper that I made. And I might mention, hmm. Peggy, if there's anything your listeners might want um, I, there should be, these are all, they can just have these. I don't know how to get them to, maybe they can send me an okay. email and I can send them links or something. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah Cause I think you sent them to me as images, not PDFs. Okay. I'll and... make a folder that has all PDFs. Okay. And then, and then maybe we can just share a link on the description of yeah. this show and that'll make it easier to share. So they're, yeah. you're not getting tons of emails too. That okay. Works. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a sample of handwriting paper. Now I know a lot of your learners might be older and this might not be really great for them. It kind of mm -hmm. depends on the learner's needs, but um, for your visual, they need to see the visual. Uh, yeah. So the grass is going to be your baseline. The airplane was going to be the middle. And then the sun um, is going to be oh, okay. the very top. Yeah. And it. then the worm, he lives down in the dirt. Okay. So yep. that's where your little tail letters go. Right. Yeah. Well, that's good. And again, idea. you could put the, remember how I told you about the tactile, like you could put the, um, the, uh, cross stitch behind that and use a crown oh, and again yeah. that would mm -hmm. help them have that kinesthetic it would be visual and um they're also getting some of that um that uh, sensory um right. right of like where they are in space kind of mm -hmm. thing so yeah yeah that's perception mm -hmm. yep yeah because even like directional, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. kids have a hard time with that. So having mm -hmm. those those cues yeah. there is mm -hmm. extremely helpful. Right. Awesome. Oh, that's just a tutoring slide. Um, I'm I, I do tutoring in reading with okay. kids. So. Yeah, and we'll definitely share your your website yeah. at the end. So. Okay, yeah, this is that. a good one. This is going to include some different modalities. So. Um, I do online lessons too. So I, I sent Peggy the slide that um, had a sample of what I do with a child on online via Zoom. So basically I will either have the child click on a sound and I'll plug in the sound, what it is. So plug in the sound or say the sound and um, listen to the word, um, listen to the sounds that you hear in the word. So if the word is bat, bat, Tap the word bat, b at. Also, what I do here is, you know, those things are really popular now, poppets. You oh, can yes, get yeah. For anything. Mm -hmm. Recently, my most favorite thing lately has been they have rulers now. Poppet rulers. Really? My huh. kid, this has been their mo this has been their favorite so far. I have huh. a whole bunch, but this has been their favorite so far. A ruler, like a 12 inch ruler, mm -hmm. and it's and it's rubber like a poppet, okay? Right. Uh -huh. And I will have them actually count those sounds. So if the word is oh. bat, they're going to push down b a t. So they see that has three sounds. So mm. they're seeing it. 
right? Right. They heard me yep. say it. They're saying it out loud, and now they are actually touching it. Mm -hmm. it. So, yeah. at okay. Now let's map that word. So, mm -hmm. if your child is struggling, um, I will tell you. I I refrain from the word sight words on your curriculum. If you want to use that, that's fine. I like to either use instant or heart, instant or heart words, either one or what mm -hmm. I like to use just because sight words are scary. And they, I, it was, um, I say scary because that's <laughs> partly why we were in tears every day. Oh. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so we actually orthographically map the word. So when we okay. orthographically map a word, we've now built that picture in our brain. And I don't know if I sent oh, that to you, a picture yeah. of a horse, Peggy, with a, a word. I don't know if I sent that to you or not, but uh, you can look at a picture of a horse and I can put the word dog on it. And you are going to say dog because you have orthographically mapped dog into yeah, your brain. Yeah, you didn't send me that one. I didn't send that. I should have sent that yeah. one. Um, so bat, b at. So the B goes in one box, the A goes in another box, and the T goes in the next box. Hmm. And that is how you can do that little activity. You can also That's use great. another thing that I do is I bring down like little chips or little, you can use coins, little tokens hmm. of any sort b at to map it. And then you can actually graph it as in writing the letters. Oh, so okay. the map would actually be, you could, you could just put um, little chips or something, you know, something mm -hmm. tangible in there. And then the bottom section where it says graph the word, you could actually write those sounds. I got it. Yep. So then they have something tactile to move yes. around right. on that map mm -hmm. part and then graphing it would be And you can do this writing. with math. I, I know I, mine's focus a lot on reading and spelling and things. Um, mm -hmm. You can do this with math. There's hmm. no reason why you couldn't have like seven crayons lined up hmm. and then you could have them count those seven crowns and then you could have them tap those seven crowns. Then you could write the number seven over in the mm, right hand mm -hmm. side. I mean, you can do it with, with anything really. Right. Uh, incorporating yeah. Those. Yeah. It's kind of following those bases you were talking right. about at the beginning and, and just, mm -hmm. just, and then for like geography, you know, history, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you can buy these for really cheap. Um, and you can even make your own, but I have these little carpets and you can even go to a carpet barn that is mm -hmm. like, get remnant or whatever. Right. Um, but I have these little carpets that actually have like the United States and then it has our state. And so I have hmm. the United States that has like the states and capitals. Hmm. And so we'll play the game on the carpet and it's, it's a big carpet. So they're walking on it. So I'll say, okay, ah. go from Texas to Missouri. And mm -hmm. I'll, I'll say, okay, you know, Austin to Jefferson city or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then what direction did you walk? So, you know, we're incorporating right. that as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of things you can do with those fun rugs if you have the space for it. Sometimes right. it's a matter of space. <laughs> <laughs> you have to move some furniture around every once in a while. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And I think there was one similar. Nope, this was mm -hmm. the... Um... So this is Scarborough's rope. And I put this one in here because I, you know, I talked to you about the baseball field. Mm -hmm. base, and... I just wanted to put this one in here because this, this is partly why we use modalities. This is why we have ways to get to our kids and learning. Now, this rope actually has to do with reading. Hmm. Um, it's also called the reading rope. But your brain is absolutely so powerful. You all know that. Hmm. But the brain is made up of so many different areas. And we have something called fMRI technology that's helping us to understand this more all the time. Hmm. And so you can see here, this is specifically geared for reading. We, our brain is not just geared up naturally for reading. Um, yeah. We actually have to build those healthy strands together, weave them together. So you can see mm. the greenish colored, greenish bluish colored weaves have to do with language comprehension, while the orangish reddish weaves have to do with word recognition. Mm. And when those are all tied together, then you have skilled reading. Wow. Yeah. So those are all in different areas of the brain. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it is a very important complex. to try to engage. You know, right. that's why it's important to like use these lip pictures, mm, right? Mm -hmm. To try to engage those different components and having exactly. them move them down to tactile and such. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And it's as someone who didn't even know what the word phonics meant when they started homeschooling, you know, it was like, why? I don't understand the complexity of this. <laughs> but um, but it is extremely it is complex, complex. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. especially when we only have 25 percent of our English language being Anglo-Saxon. Yes. So that's complex in and mm-hmm. of itself. And then the rest is mainly Greek and Latin. There's a little bit other, but yeah. 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 It is a mix of a lot. So, (laughs) yes. Okay. This is something you can use with your learners that are struggling maybe with the way that um, a different method you could teach them. Uh, Posters are good and different colors Mm -hmm. are also good. Okay. So, um, and this is just one example that you could do. Um, Kids that struggle with the would, could, should. Um, Mm. you could turn this into a chant. You can stand up and dance it. You can elbow knee it. You can do any, Mm. get that kind of set. Remember VACT. So Mm V-A-K-T to help your kids that just don't learn in the ways, you know, the natural way of learning or what we call, you know, traditional ways of learning. Yes. (laughs) Just remember VACT. If you can't remember um, anything, just take away VACT, visual, yeah. auditory, kinesthetic, and tactile, and you don't have to make a mess of your house. Yes. You can't do it <laughs> anyway. You don't have to be, break out the shaving cream anytime we want to do something fun. You do not have to do that. You also don't have to break out the Play-Doh, okay? You don't have, you can mm. if you want to, but I know parents will say, well, the Play-Doh makes such a mess, and then it dries up, and it's on the floor everywhere, and so <laughs> some love Play-Doh, some hate it, but you don't even have to do that. You don't even have to have a sand tray. Mm. So just, um, I just want to encourage you to, there's so many things out there. I um, yeah. I have tons of things that I can share with you. Um, there's lots of free stuff. You do not need to spend a lot of money on anything. There's so many mm. things that are just available. So this is one little poster. Yeah. Oh, you lucky duck. So my kids now, they know what could, should. Just remember, oh, you lucky duck. Oh, you lucky duck. Hmm. And I'll get it. And then, oh, you lucky duck. And shh, oh, you lucky duck. Huh. Very cool. (laughs) So these are just the five core components of literacy. And um, this is just another part of the why we want to access the VACT, why mm. we want to do that baseball diamond, because um, I talk about these as we want to deliver systematic instruction. So going back to Peggy's really great question about curriculum, right. honestly, some curriculum do not introduce concepts systematically. So what does that mm. mean? Well, that means that we are introducing a concept systematically. So for example, let's say that you want your child to read, and I'm going small here. I don't know what age Mm -hmm. of parents I'm talking to right now, but let's say you want your child to read, look at the turtle. Okay. Look at the turtle. In order to read, look at the turtle, the child is going to need need to know that the OO says, uh, okay. mm-hmm. The child is going to also know that turtle is a stable final syllable L-E. Hmm. So t- teaching them the six syllable types would be systematic. They need to know that before they can actually read that word. Hmm. And then also what that means is explicitly teach. So that means um, look and see what your child's needs are. Are they missing the word look all the time? Are they Hmm. they struggling? Are they just guessing at words? Um, What's going on there? So we go back and we teach the kids, um, you know, very, just very early learnings. And Hmm. then we introduce the concept. The next day we review the concept and teach a new concept concept. We do that all by using the modalities. I just talked about VACT. So we always use the VACT and it doesn't Mm. take a long time. I'm talking like five or 10 minutes. Okay. Mm. Mini lessons. It doesn't have to be some hour long, full blown lesson. Right. Yep. So the semantics and the orthography and the phonology are the buckets of skills whenever it comes to reading. Hmm. Absolutely. Um, have to have this, the buckets. And what happens is when kids come to me for that dyslexia kinds of tutoring, some of these buckets are not full or hmm. one might be really, really empty. And so hmm. we have to really build systematically 
what's missing in the bucket and get mm-hmm. it full. And whenever we have our buckets full, then we, ha- we have vocabulary, reading comprehension, phonics, phonological awareness, and fluency are the five key mm-hmm. core components of literacy. Mm-hmm. All those have to be done in reading lessons in order to have that fluent reader. And the rationale is because I think there's a slide, Peggy, that has a little dog that has some percentages of readers. Let me see. No, that's not it. But, okay. The the one back, I'll go ahead and talk about that one before this one. Oh, these are some more examples of what you can do. For, okay, let's see. No, that's not it. <laughs> if you go back to the dog with the checklist, I think it said daily list of things to do. Right there. No, right there. So yeah. daily lessons. These can be done every day. Letter sound correspondences. A, A, Apple. Isolating and writing the initial, final, and middle sounds. Bat. B, A, T. Okay, remember how mm-hmm. we said that? So the initial sound is the mm. first sound. The medial sound is the middle sound. And the final sound is the last sound. Mm-hmm. And you can do that with your kids, your early learners. You can do that with the alphabet. So you could say my... Um, left hand is my beginning hand my right hand is my end hand you could have them start naming their alphabet a b c d e f g going all the way to the letter m and then the letter m we say switch and we say n o p all the way to z that's whenever we were getting the right and the left sides of the body Mm -hmm. going and also we are coordinating eyes visual with right. our finger pointing to the letters. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then we're also giving them vocabulary, initial, medial, and final. So I'll have my kids get out. Um, this isn't every day, but one day I'll have them get out their 3D letters, you know, little magnetic letters. Mm. Oh, yeah. I'll have mm-hmm. them place the initial, medial, and final letters okay. on their alphabet strip. So they'll put the A. And then they'll put the M and the N in the middle, and then they'll put the Z at the end, and then they'll fill in those blanks while saying them. Oh, okay. And then what I have them do also for review is we stand up. This would be a part. We stand up. We put, Mm -hmm. we get out our writing hand and we put two fingers out to our belly button. Our belly button is our baseline and we hold our shoulder with our hand that is not our writing hand. So we hold our shoulder. And so we're writing our letters. Mm. We had just, Mm -hmm. okay. You could do that with words, spelling words. Maybe parents are like, oh, my kid can't spell. Let's do this with spelling words, Mm. Um, things Mm -hmm. like that. Just another another way to get them up and moving, to really engage them and uh, get those modalities that go through the different right, modalities. to get that movement in, mm-hmm. get incorporated the movement. in yep. there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then they blend reading words, which we just talked about. Segmenting, we just we talked about that mm-hmm. with the mapping. And then eventually sentence level reading. Um, if they're not there yet, obviously you won't do that. Reading sentences and then... Mm -hmm. dictation. So you give them a sentence. Uh, I give mine a Bible verse every day to dictate Mm -hmm. and then vocabulary, our daily lessons. So I thought I had a slide on here, Peggy, but apparently I didn't send it to you of, um, you know, 60% of our kids are going Mm -hmm. to need that explicit systematic instruction. They're going to need that in every single subject. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like we said, a few of them, they're going to learn. They're just natural learners, right? That's how right. God made them. Whenever we went mm-hmm. back to how your child connects with God. And I talked about just the different kinds of learning styles we had. So your intellectuals, mm-hmm. they're just going to learn. That's how God made them. That's what they mm-hmm. do. That's how their brain is wired. And right. so they're probably going to be your lawyers and your, you know, your doctors and uh, wonderful. I'm super happy about that. Mm-hmm. But then we also need our musicians and we need our teachers and we need exactly. our artists, right? Mm-hmm. We need our, we need our um, naturalist people that are out there in nature and helping us discover new things and what's mm-hmm. happening in the ocean and all these different things. 
So if we, we just have to figure out how to engage that yes. when they're little mm-hmm. with us and nurture that, mm-hmm. channel that energy and that time. Um, you know, I told you about my little woodworker. He yeah. also has, um, it's called a, um, what does it do? It's like a burning tool so he can like burn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I had so, a child that did that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that's really great too for writing, right? Oh, so yeah. So he'll take yeah. a two by four of wood and he'll burn a sentence into the wood, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just scrap cheap. I mean, it's just right. scrap yeah. wood. So. Mm-hmm. Um, have fun with it. Just make whatever is happening in your home. What does your home look like? What do you have available to you that's not going to cost you a fortune? Right. Um, yep. Things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Those are all great, great ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't I have you talk about your um, your website and um, and what people can find on there? Well, yes, you can just go over to cherishchildrenministries.org and over on the website, um, it there's all kinds of things over there. So there's a shop over there. Um, there is, and there's a code you can use, um, back to school 2022, all caps, mm. for a discount okay. if you need anything over there. There's free resources. There's a free mini video series. Um I focus a lot on, of course, hippotherapy and dyslexia and dyslexia Mm -hmm. tutoring. So I do a lot of dyslexia tutoring. I do tutoring with all kinds of kids, but Mm -hmm. that's kind of my specialty. Um, And you can listen to some, um, uh, my story is over there if you want to listen to that. Mm -hmm. Um, And I do um, work with kids that have dyslexia, ADD, ADHD, autism, other spectrum disorders. And, um, they, they come to me and their parents are sad and oh. pulling their hair out. Like, what can I do to help? And, mm-hmm. um, and so I get to help in that process. So yeah. I do, yeah. I do offer those services for help. That's... And then there's some classes over there. If mm-hmm. parents need some classes. So it's just hopefully a good um, resource for parents that of struggling learners really is what it's for. Right. Yep. Yep. And just need some ideas. I know yeah. a lot of times we're just like, I don't even know what to do. Right. And so you, you've given us some great um, starting points to, to, to launch from. And as we uh, um, think about, you know, going into this new year and mm-hmm. how are we going to approach things differently? And I know some parents are often on the fence going, can I really do this or can I do this again? Um, I feel like I failed the first time around or maybe the first couple of years. <laughs> but yes, you can do it. Um, do it. We're here to, to encourage you in that. And Rebecca just shared some amazing um alternatives. And so thank you for just your willingness to do that and, and share just ideas. That parents You're very welcome. My pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. And check out our website at cherishchildrenministries.org. Rebecca has a lot to share. She's written some amazing articles on our website too. So um, you can search for her in the, the search bar and, and find those as well. Um, and I know a lot of your articles that you've written have hyperlinks to a lot of your resources too. So, yeah, um, so that's extremely helpful if you're, you're looking for something specific. And um, so that'll be all built into that. But we'll make sure to get that folder together and um, get that in the description on YouTube so that you can um, click on that and, and get ideas from the things that she shared tonight. So, well, thank you, Rebecca. This has been just a wonderful conversation. It's always nice to have you on and um, you have so many great ideas and just very real about, you know, the struggle, but there are solutions and they're so practical too. And I love, love the take of your house doesn't have to be messy. (laughs) Messy, messy just happens and we don't need to add to it, you know? (laughs) No, it's always fun to be on your show and thank you for inviting Mm. me. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And like I said earlier, this is this month has been on focusing on our community stories. And this this year we we've added some some more older, more 
wiser, experienced um, people. I know in the past years we've been we've gotten parents on who were newer, and that's always encouraging too because it's like you can make it. You <laughs> we we survived our first year, um, but for those who've been doing it longer um, too, that there still are struggles, and um, and you can make it through those too. It's just lean on God. Uh, I love that Rebecca. You know, we just have to mm-hmm. just discover how God wired our child and, and follow that. That's so important. Yeah. Yeah. So as we dive into school planning now, this next month of August, we're going to focus on IEPs. Um, I know a lot of parents write homeschool IEPs or goals and, and how to track those. Cause in some States they are required. Um, other States parents just, um, may not be required, but they want to know that they're, they're meeting those goals for their kids and tracking that information. So I'm going to have a variety of guests on in August who are going to talk about different ways that you can approach reaching those goals, not so much writing the IEPs. Um, our blogs will focus more on that. Um, this next month, but um, we're going to have um, Stephanie Buckwalter back on next week, and she um, she kind of approaches it about parent prep for teaching a special needs child, and especially she um, she has a, a daughter with intellectual disabilities and um, some more severe um, learning challenges. And so she's going to talk about just how to prepare. (laughs) And I I think we all need to hear that. So, um, so you'll definitely want to join me back and I'll be back in the day. Um, this was just a a special time and definitely wanted to, to work it into Rebecca's schedule. So we are glad to be able to do that. So, um, so yeah, so we'll see you back here, uh, next Tuesday, um, to, to, continue the conversation and start on our new topic but um, thanks all for joining us and thank you again Rebecca it has been a pleasure having you on and um, and God bless you all we'll see you next week <laughs> so bye everybody Y'all, we all got weaknesses. It's okay. Just acknowledge what those weaknesses are and be willing to confront them. Even when restoration doesn't work, forgiveness always does. Chris, how did you overcome the whole passive husband thing? I let him through it. (laughs) There is work for us to do. It is not just sit back and cross my arms and just kind of wait for God to drop the miracle. Hey, y'all, it's Dana Shea. For real faith-based marriage advice, be sure to tune in to Real Relationship Talk on lifeaudio.com or wherever you get your podcasts.